I am on a mission to find out where Starbucks sources one of the rarest and most globally sought after coffees for its Starbucks reserve stores. This coffee is from my island home of Jamaica. The journey will take me from New York to the coastal capital of Kingston and up a long extinct volcanic mountain range to 5,000 feet above sea level to farms where cafe arabica is grown shaded under a diverse canopy of trees. Here coffee berries produce the distinctive cocoa and citrus floral aromas that define the iconic Jamaican Blue Mountain coffee brand. Join me on this journey to discover where these coffee berries come from and how these coffees can help support the conservation of one of the most biologically important areas in the Caribbean and indeed the world. Coffee is the world's most traded agricultural commodity. The trade is worth over US 15 billion annually, and over 2 billion cups of coffee are consumed every day worldwide. Because tropical forest destruction for agriculture is a major contributor not only to climate change and species extinction, but also to a range of other serious environmental woes, it is important for us to discuss the choices and decisions that coffee drinkers are making about the types of coffee they are buying and how these choices can significantly affect forests in the most species-rich places of the planet. These choices also affect the health and livelihoods of hundreds of thousands of coffee farmers in tropical countries where all our coffee comes from. So, one important way that farming coffee can provide strong benefits for human health and the natural environment is to grow coffee under shade. That is, planting coffee trees how it naturally grew historically, as a shade-loving plant under the cover of larger trees in its native Ethiopia. Shade coffee has numerous important pluses. First of all, it tastes much better. Shade coffee also protects and enriches the soil, stores carbon and buffers against climate change, provides habitats for thousands of native living organisms throughout the tropics, and also important benefits such as supporting clean, fresh water availability and moderating localized weather. I asked PhD student and wildlife biologist Damien White about his research on shade versus sun coffee. He explained that shade coffee farms have more birds and less economically important insect pests on their farms. I did my research about six years ago where I was looking at the effect of bird predation on the coffee growing on a different management. So basically I looked at farms that were basically sun coffee that didn't have any shade trees compared to shade coffee trees. They found more birds on the shade coffee tree. If you think about it, in coffee, in the sun coffee, you didn't have any trees. So you didn't have any areas where different birds, as we say, specialists would hang out. So first we found a different, a significant difference in the number of birds on sun coffee versus shade. The second thing we found out is the major pests that we found on the coffee farms, which were coffee leaf miner, which is a caterpillar, and which becomes a mat. And then you had the second, which was a coffee bear borer, which is a beetle. So now the birds were so good at getting these pests. So for example, the bird would go in and take the caterpillar out of the leaf, and the bird would also go and take the beetle out of the berry. The interesting thing about it, these guys would be spraying all sorts of chemicals on the sun coffee, but they still couldn't reach the pest, compared to the shade coffee where they could go and get the pest. When you grow coffee, you only get one crop per year. So for example, the large sun coffee farms, they, 
they will just get the money once they get But compared to the traditional shade coffee trees, which have lumber and some also have um, fruit crops and other crops like bananas and stuff. So they constantly get um, some payment throughout the year. Another thing we also found out that we found another, um, a lot of predators, arthropod predators, like spiders, like a praying mantis and stuff like that. So on the shade coffee farm, we had a diverse, um, what I should say, system of animals there. And all of these predators played a role in controlling pests. I also visited the shade coffee farm of farmer Michael Lynn in the Blue Mountains. Michael explains to me the uniqueness of the coffee beans from his shade-grown coffee plots. This is one of our best plots in terms of taste and also in terms of production, so the balance is great and we hope to emulate that all across the farm. Rainforest certification will open up a lot more doors. Um, a lot of companies are now asking for the certification and hence the market would expand for us just by having this certification. Along with that they have a good uh, a lot of practices which which are healthy and should be followed in the farm. It hopefully will increase our efficiencies and also our agronomy. Starbucks has a certification which is called Cafe Practices which I hear is very similar to Rainforest Alliance. It basically ensures that your chemical management is good, um, the shade is good, it gives you agronomy, it gives you um, what chemicals to use, um, what chemicals not to use um, to protect the environment and such like, um, proper water usage. Um, it's a very extensive program. In cafe practices, it also enables you to, to interact with your workers more. So it's more of a social, it also has a social aspect to it, where basically um, you, you pay a, a certain amount to each worker, you educate the worker as to your plans mm -hmm. in how to get the farm up to date into the certification and the different aspects of it. Because habitat loss is such an important concern for the tropics, mining, unsustainable agriculture, the lumber industry, shade coffee is actually amazing for the environment. It protects forests, it conserves trees, and that has so many effects that are positive for the environment, for nature, and for wildlife. And it's for this reason that one of the main things I like to do when I come to the Blue and Drunker Mountains National Park is bird watching. So I am here with Ricardo Miller, founder and CEO of Arrowhead Birding. I had a question for Ricardo. Specifically, I wanted to ask him why he takes his clients here to the Blue and Drunker Mountains, and more importantly, why he takes them into shade coffee. Well, Jamaica is recognized as probably one of the best locations for birding in the Caribbean for the simple reason that it has so many endemic birds, one of the highest numbers of any Caribbean island. Currently, we are looking at 29 endemic species in Jamaica that are found nowhere else. It would have been 31, but unfortunately, we lost two over the years. We're always looking for the endemics. That's the key thing of any birding trip. But there are different types of birds that occupy what we call different niches. You know, some feeds on fruit, some feed on insects. And when we're in the cough, we're actually looking for certain insect feeders. Those are the main ones we're looking for, things like the Jamaican toady. Because they are the ones that actually go amongst the coffee and get those little insects that are, you know, can be pests and, and so forth. So we're thinking about things like the Jamaican toady, we're thinking about warblers. You know, although the warblers are North American birds that come down in the winter to spend the time in Jamaica. A lot of North American bird watchers don't even know those birds because they're so spread out in North America. When they're here in Jamaica, they're pretty much concentrated. So it's much easier to see them here. Shade coffee is really beneficial to the farmers for, for first and foremost because it means that they use less pesticides. How, how this comes about is that the trees that are planted amongst the, amongst the coffee actually provides habitat for the birds that in turn takes care of the pests that are affecting the coffee. So having shade grown coffee is actually very beneficial to the farmers. It reduces the amount of pesticides they have to use and it eventually increasing their yield. In his office in the capital of Kingston, 
Michael proudly displays his certificate recognizing his distinction as the first Jamaican coffee producer to supply Starbucks North America with coffee beans. But all of this is just the beginning for Michael. He wants to work with the Blue and Dronka Mountains National Park to choose even more native biodiversity supporting trees for his farms to produce even more sustainably grown coffee for coffee drinkers and bird conservation. Michael also wants to obtain other sustainable coffee accreditations such as Rainforest Alliance certified and bird friendly coffee that are gaining recognition for their positive impact on both farmer livelihoods and higher environmental standards globally.